Okay, looks like we're running about a 10-second delay now. 17 seconds, 18 seconds, 19 seconds, 20 seconds, 22 seconds, 24 seconds, 27-second delay, 28. Okay, I can live with that. I can live with that a little bit. So my name's Ray Carrington, and this is Carrington's Hot and Mental Health. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening to another episode of Carrington's Hot Rods and Mental Health. So I tried to do some live chats a couple times. I've tried uh, multiple, multiple times. So I finally, what I finally did was I changed my bit rate. I moved everything down a notch to try and better better dial everything in. And so it wasn't working. It wasn't working at all uh, for several days that I tried to do that. And uh, I couldn't understand why. And finally, I troubleshot it uh, down Google because I am pretty much inept when it comes to anything uh, technology-wise because I am 51 years old. I turned 51 last week. And... uh my generation, all of us older guys, we just are not as savvy as other people, younger people, the millennials. The millennials are much better at it than we are. And that's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's good to know that you're getting older. It's good to know that you're growing in that direction, in my opinion. But I wanted to talk about cars. And I was really excited to discuss my 49 and hot rods in general and all that other good stuff. And I had, man, I just did a great show. I blasted out 45 minutes, 45 minute show. It was nice. It was a nice show. I enjoyed doing it. And then I, 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 I was so happy and excited. I uploaded it and, um, I had the mic muted the whole time so I could hear it through my headphones. But if you were looking, if you were watching me on uh, YouTube, it was just me moving my mouth, you know. And I just did that for all you listening guys on, on the podcast. So, and, and it was just a great show. And I can't believe it. I've done that a couple times where I've done something technically inept uh, for what I thought was a really good show that I thought I was doing something really good and people were really going to enjoy it. And I, I, and you know, there's no, there's no residual for me in this whole, in, in doing any of this stuff. I just enjoy doing it. And uh, I know that I have uh, <clears throat> in trying to figure out this system to get this live chat going. I know I have probably uploaded a hundred videos in the last two weeks, three, two minutes. Like I said, do a 30 minute video. And by the time, uh, everything was all said and done, uh, it was five minutes I actually made it upload because I had my bit rate so wide that, uh, no one could see anything that I was doing. And that was just, uh, it was a learning curve, I guess. And, and I'm sure that uh, a lot of the millennials, if they're listening or if they watch, they, they're like, oh, that guy's so stupid. And you know what? I can own that. <laughs> I can take that to the bank, brother. And so with my video transfer, I had this little piece of kit that was missing, as they say in Britain, and it was expensive. It cost like you know, 125 U.S. dollars, which in what? In British currency, what is that? thousand pounds right <laughs> that's because we americans you have to understand we know nothing about anyone else's currency because we are so comfortable in our global dominance that that we don't consider uh other people's uh currency values and i know that might sound facetious but we're not facetious we're just born that way uh but what is that that's a, a thousand pounds of uh, 
quite a bit. No, no, it's 125 bucks or um, one quarter of a Spanish balloon, the balloon or um, a billion pesos, a billion pesos um, and uh, a thousand uh, whatever. (laughs) Uh, Oh, my goodness. It's so good to talk to you guys finally and have these technical issues worked out. Because I was really excited last week to talk about cars. And I was excited. I, I was enjoying myself to think about it. And uh, and I was really, you know, sometimes you get that place in your mind where you're just going. You're like, I got this, boom, and it's just rolling. And that's where I was that day, and it was really good. And I was talking about everything that I've got my, my, my whole set up in here and, and showed everybody. And I finally have multiple camera angles. It was a struggle to to technically put that stuff together. And I, I say, you know, that is an aged thing. That is because I'm older. That is because I'm I'm a transistor guy. And uh, I'm I'm really illiterate uh, or savvy with computers. You know, I'm I'm really good with a MacBook. I'm really good with uh, a PC. Uh, I've worked, you know, I do a lot of stuff technically. I do a lot of typing. I do a lot of office work. So I'm not completely illiterate to the electronics and and actually technology. I don't think we call it electronics anymore, do we? I think that's something left over from the 80s too, from Radio Shack. So just to give you guys an update on what's going on in my life, I am uh, still trying to eat right. And I'm not trying, I'm doing it. I'm not eating any, uh, wow, any carbohydrates or anything like that. Well, of course you can't escape carbs, but I'm eating consciously. A lot of carrots, a lot of, you know, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm doing what the doctor said do. So I'm working on that. And that is still a project. And it's going to be a really long time before we ever get to the other end of that, that, you know, uh, uh, endeavor, uh, that kind of stuff doesn't happen. Change like that doesn't happen overnight. And it's not an instant process. Uh, work is going good. Work is work. I have a lot of things to do. It's tax time. So if you guys are working on your taxes, uh, I'm with you there. I've got to get my taxes finished and I have to, uh, do something else for the state of Colorado. A place I used to work, I guess, is under audit. I've got to fill out this paperwork and send it back to the unemployment agency because I was a contractor. So that means I worked for myself and I worked through that agency. And uh, they're going to need me to um, fill out some paperwork to prove that uh, that was the relationship and that I wasn't a time clock employee and so i mean it's a it's, they do that all the time it's a common thing so i've got to get that done and so i've got a pretty busy week we've got a tree breaker tree breaker coming in um supposed to be in today we're supposed to have some kind of a winter weather roll in here and, uh, that weather will be Uh, pretty intense and it's supposed to start this evening and carry on for a couple days so that's happening and that's happening uh soon and so i I thought i'd come in and knock out this episode so anyway i know i'm just all over the place and that probably you don't care about any of that stuff but uh i'm really still in the process of uh decompressing the work that I just did uh, to, to get this, this system working right. It was just, oh, it just put me out there. And uh, I, uh, I got a long way to go. But we're doing it. We're rolling. And I appreciate you guys' support. I appreciate you hanging in there with me through all of this stuff. And... Uh, I want to talk about Joe Rogan just quickly. (laughs) 
Oh, Joe Rogan's in trouble. He said something, or he let someone say something on his show that people did not agree with. Now, I love the Joe Rogan show. And I am extremely jealous of his wonderful popularity. But you know what? The guy's a great interviewer. He does really good work. And I know, you know, he's an actor, comedian. He's got multiple talents in uh, show business. He, he does that. He's like Conan O'Brien. He is impressive. And uh, I watch him, and it's just fun. He's good at it. And he has, um, he has conversations that are, are, are motivated and moving, and I like all that stuff. And so I, I, first off, YouTube and Spotify, the views expressed in this program are not necessarily the views of YouTube and Spotify. YouTube and Spotify and all those guys, I've never made a dime off any of that stuff. So, you know, I can't be canceled because I never was activated. <laughs> you know, if... If I am in the entertainment industry, somebody forgot to tell me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't even get free stickers. <laughs> you know how bad life has to be when you don't even get free stickers? <laughs> yeah, free stickers. Yeah. Joe Biden, you know, the Joe Biden bumper stickers. I have to pay for those. <laughs> oh, I just snorted. <clears throat> I never snort. I must be getting sick. But anyway, uh, Joe Rogan's a good show. Joe Rogan's a good host. And I don't know about Joe Rogan's politics or anything like that. I don't, I don't know. Hold on, my camera just shut down for no reason. And I, I like using that camera, so give me one second. I'm going to turn it back on because I don't, that's not cool. Oh. Oh, well, there we go. So anyway, I like the show. And uh, I think I think that to say that that uh, someone's trying to cancel him is... Uh, it's uh, the the Second Amendment is a really important thing in our Constitution. It's a really important thing in our culture. It's a really important thing in our lives, the freedom of speech. And so I, I don't necessarily agree with uh, the cancel culture on Joe Rogan, especially. Uh, I think that... Uh, a lot of times people say things that are controversial. There's always been chicken littles in the world. There's always been chicken littles and there's always been flat earthers. And there's always been somebody that doesn't agree with what's being promoted mainstream. And a lot of people have uh, organized their lives so that they uh, highlight these things and that's how they make their money. You got people that with the UFOs and you know they go on speaking tours. That's what they do, and uh, I don't believe that that Joe Rogan 
uh, is wrong for doing what he does. I don't, uh, I don't understand why it's such a big deal. I've seen all of his shows pretty much uh, that people are upset about, and I think it is something that <clears throat> some people uh, don't agree with. But I don't think it's any different than Whoopi Goldberg and some of the outlandish things that she says. And that's that's her thing, man. That's what she does. And she can believe whatever she wants to believe. People can believe whatever they want to believe, and they can say whatever they want to say. It is up to you and I to believe the truth, to work in the truth. That's what we look for in our life is the truth. That's what we're, we're all about. But anyway, that's not the purpose of my show today. The purpose of my show today is I wanted to talk about cars. I wanted to talk about the 49. I wanted to talk about all kinds of stuff. And so let's do that. Now, in our culture, um, we, have, we have all kinds of cars that we like. We have uh, everybody likes the muscle rods, the muscle cars. And yes, of course you do. Who doesn't want a 1971 Cuda? I do. But in reality, that car is pretty much unobtainium. Uh, for a guy like me working stiff, I'm never going to have $300,000 to spend on a car. Not ever. And so, uh, not unless something really bizarre happens, like a Powerball ticket or something really magnificent, some kind of windfall, profit falls upon my lap. I don't ever see that happening. But, I, you know, I do see uh, the future with, uh, you know, like a, 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 imagine if you will, let's say um, a 1936 Plymouth, a coupe, not a, not a flat back or sedan, uh, a coupe with the nice curves. It's a good looking car. You know, you can pick those up between twenty five and thirty five thousand dollars. Now I can see a guy like me sliding into a machine like that. If like the wife went to work and never came home, I can see that happening. And there are a lot of things that get in the way of that that aren't gonna let that happen. But I say, you know, I'm a car guy. Just Another Car Guy. I say that all the time. That is my YouTube channel, Just Another Car Guy. Used to used to put it on all my videos. But I can see myself in that car because I don't golf. I don't have a bass boat. There are not a lot of things I do. I go out to eat a couple times a month, and I do hot rods. I don't also do hot rods. I don't also do cars. That is my hobby. It's what I like to do, and it's what a lot, of, a lot of people like to do. And it's no different than people that collect watches or stamps or anything else. But the thing that I always like to talk about, if you're, you're into cars, you like cars, and you're thinking about getting into a car hobby, is when you get an old car, it doesn't matter how nice it is or what it, what it is about it, it's going to take... A lot of work because it is an old car. You, you, I like to put it in perspective like um, <clears throat> you wouldn't take a World War II era uh, fighter, like a Spitfire, and you wouldn't expect it to, to fly constantly like a modern jet, a, matter, a modern fighter. So it's the same thing with, with old cars. And so a really important thing about classic cars or hot rods that you you need to understand about the hobby is it's just as important to enjoy taking care of the cars as it is to have the car. And a lot of people will look at a car and go, Oh my God, that's, that's what I want. I need that car. And they, and they don't really think of all the things that come along with it. And I'm going to name a few of those things for you as we talk. One of those things is space. It's very difficult to build a hot rod 
when you, you're limited in space. Now, you can do it. You can work in the grass. You can work in the weeds. You can work in the alleys. It can happen. But if you like living in an apartment, if you're living somewhere where you have limited space, it's very difficult uh, to maintain a multiple car addiction because <clears throat> cars, uh, they take up space and you tend to have them apart sometimes and you put them back together. And uh, some people don't like that. They don't like to look at that. They don't want to see it when they drive by because like in the 49 and it's, scenario is I was looking like, for instance, I know I, I probably told you guys before, but the taillight lenses for that 49, which are four pieces of plastic, nothing spectacular, but the repop the taillights for that one guy does it in the world and he'll take the time to make me a set, I guess is a thousand dollars. That's a thousand bucks for repop taillights. That's wow. <sighs> And I have a whole box of right tail lights. I don't have any left tail lights. And every old car like it I come across, the left tail light's gone. Because guess what? For some reason, people break the left tail lights on that car. And so where I'm going with this is um, a parts car. Whether you're building a 80s model Trans Am or a... 69 Camaro or a 71 Cuda or 49 or 46, whatever. It's good to have a parts car. And the reason is, uh, like on my 49, I have all the chrome moldings and the, or the stainless and everything for the car, but some of it's a little beat up. Uh, the front fenders on the car are a little wavy, uh, a lot of little nicks in it and, and, they're a little bit bowed, and that can be worked out. It can, and, but it's going to take days of work on the fin front fenders, and the hood is similar. Now, I found a, a parts car. I can probably pick up, uh, I think it's in Michigan or somewhere, <clears throat> for probably, I probably can get it for 2500 and it's a complete car, four-door, same model, same year. It's a four-door. Uh, I don't know what it was called back then. I don't know if it was just Dodge or if it was a Diplomat or whatever. I don't know the name of the car, the make of the car. But it wasn't Cornet. But the front cap is exactly the same, and the, and the trim on it's the same. So uh, the seats in the car were there. They, they're they not uh, as bad as the seats I have. Uh, they're covered. They have um, all the stuffing in them. And they could be uh, fitted pretty easily with some uh, decorations and cleaned up, steam cleaned, and probably rewrapped pretty easily compared to the ones that I have. Hello, Alexandra. And so the thing is with that car is um, those seats alone for my car are probably going to cost around five grand to get them covered and get them done. At, a, at an upholstery shop. And that's the, in, the entire interior of that car. It's probably going to cost about 6500 bucks. Now, this car, steering column was good. Dash was good. Uh, the door panels were good. Everything in the car was pretty good. And those front fenders were, were absolutely straight. So it would be a lot easier to just take those front fenders off of the donor car, parts car, and just slap them on my car, tighten it down. That saves a lot of time. And when you look at the cost of everything, you can look at it's going to be a lot uh, cheaper in the long run if I have a parts car that I could scavenge parts off of and put on mine. It's very difficult to do without space. That's where I was going with all that. Because if you have a one-car garage or if you have a apartment complex or something like that, it's very difficult to do a build job. And it's okay. I mean, you can figure it out. I figured it out. I figured it out. I, I got, you know, I'm down Rex's. And, of course, I'm, I'm held up because of uh, Rex not being well. But, uh, you know, it, it's moving forward. And so you might have to get a garage somewhere. And in the old days, they used to have rental 
bays that you could rent a bay at a garage that was your your area. And some for, uh, some bases, military bases, still have uh, places like that for the, the guys living on base. And so you have all that. And you, if you move a lot, you have to think about the transportation of the car if it's still in project. There's a lot of things. And those little bitty things that add up over time can be very discouraging when you're working on a, on a hot rod and you're building a car up. It happens. It happens to me all the time. I mean, I can't turn around. And my magic number on this car, the, it, it, it tends to be $700, $750. That is kind of like the price range for everything I do. It seems to come in $700 to $750 blocks. I don't know why. That is just the way my mind connected the dots on this project as I've worked through it. Everything has been done in $700 blocks. Um, and so, like the seats, when that, when that time comes, I may do the seats one at a time. I might take a seat in, get it done, and then take another seat in. So these things take time. And then the top, the top of the car is uh, it's roach. It's gone. So I've got to redo that top. So these, the, the reason I'm talking about this is because these are important things. When uh, when you're thinking of taking on a project, you have to really know what you're getting into. And there's nothing wrong with getting into it. But so many projects die in the garage. So many projects. I am the third guy on my car. I'm the third owner in project stage. That's important to understand. I'm the third guy to pick this car up. And like Jay Leno says, not my joke, it's his joke. I'm really good about buying a car, putting $30,000 in it. When I'm done, I got a perfectly good $18,000 car. <laughs> yeah, that's Jay Leno's joke. It's not mine. And uh, would you like to hear my listening audience right now? <laughs> the old helmet just said strap on spelled backwards is no parts. <laughs> Oh, that's what you're getting too. <laughs> when you take on one of these old cars, man, you're getting a strap on deal. Uh, and another thing that I always like to say is when you, when you get an old car, I, I like to say it doesn't matter if you buy it showroom ready or you decide to work it up. You're going to work it up yourself. It's going to cost you the same at the end. It's going to come around and cost the same at the end every time. It does, it, and you end up spending way more in a car than what what you you probably uh, what it's worth, and that's the reason it's important to understand. For me, a car is worth what it's worth to you. It doesn't matter what it's worth to anyone else, and um, that is the own that's the value of ownership. But uh, now, if you are doing it for a business, you cannot have that. You can't have that I idea. Because if, if you look at everything nuts and bolts um, and monetarily and, and like you want to own a shop to do this for a living, you have to look at the value of what you're doing and and the resale value. And like I say, I, I can see myself in like a, a 36, a 36 Plymouth. I could see that happen. I could see that with, you can buy them all the time with 350s and 283s, all kinds of good stuff like that. Nothing wrong with that. I can see that happening. I can't see a 71 CUDA. I can't see that coming around. I just don't see it happening. But it, it doesn't mean it can happen. It could happen for you. But the thing you have to think about is that space that you need to do it. And you can do it. You can paint a car in an alley. You can. It might look like you painted it in an alley. And, uh, but nothing will discourage you. If that's what you want to do and you just carry on as it goes. And, um, I have, I've had my tools stolen a hundred times. They're always stolen until I find them because I'll get spread out on something. I'll have cars and uh, tools on Bronco. I have tools in my, my car because I've been working on a, working on a car 
down in Penrose and, you know, I'm working out of the back of that Bronco and I'm going in and out happens all the time. And so sometimes you have to take time and pull all your tools back together. And so when you go to car shows and you go swap meets, you meet other people that are like-minded and you find uh, more avenues to get the things you need for your car. But that's one thing is space. The other thing is the little things. The little things when you're building a car uh, tend to be overwhelming at times. Like when, like when I put the, the carburetors on, on that car, the duals. Uh, the two Weber 36, 34-36s is what I put on it. Yes, that's what it was, 34-36s. And uh, because it's an inline six, <clears throat> that Offenhauser intake manifold and all that stuff, the dual cast iron headers. Um, the throttle body, the throttle body. Now, that's the next thing I've got to figure out. I'm going to have to make a push rod because... You know, it's got that accented old school um, throttle body on that uh, on those carburetors. It goes between them, so I've got to I've got to engineer the push rod that goes across and pushes that from the pedal. Uh, the brakes. When I did the brakes, uh, I got the Scarebird front uh, conversion, so I got discs on the front. I put Eldorado brakes on it from a. 96 Eldorado, and uh, that worked out really well. But then when I put the uh, master cylinder in it, the brake booster and the master cylinder didn't match because I bought the wrong parts because my head, when I ordered it, I didn't think about, is this the right part for that master cylinder? So I ended up buying two master cylinders and putting in there. So you have these little consecutive things that add up, and the biggest thing is your time. You know, like I say, if your wife goes to Walmart and never comes back, we can do this. We can do it because you've got, you've got time to do it. And Then if, hear me out, if in a perfect world, we can, we can make this happen. And that's the way I look at cars when I'm doing it. I, I got a car. I want it. And that's, that's what I, I do. And so the problem also with me is that competing that competing uh, desire, these sidetracks, right? Because right now, like I say, I'm really thinking about the 39. Or that 36, I'm sorry. 39 was ugly. Thir- wrong. Let me, let me pull my head out of my butt really quick. There. That 36 Plymouth, you know, I, I, it's I'm always saying, Ray. Hi, Ray. I'm a 36 Plymouth. Wouldn't we look good going through town together? I'd be doing my queen wave. Hey, all you suckers. Hey, hey, suckers. Look at me. I'm in a 36. You're not. Ha, 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 ha. And that's true with cars. Cars feel good. And, um, you know, if they were easy, everybody would have one, an old car. And so... I guess where I'm going with all that is is don't get too caught up in the idea of having it unless you also are excited with the idea of doing it. Because if you hire all this out, it's going to be very expensive. And some people can. I can't. I don't have that kind of money. I'm not living that kind of life. But I can go down and work on my hot rod. And it makes me feel good, makes me feel accomplished when I get something done. I've done so much, and there's so much more to do. Uh, But you get to thinking, why is it taking so long? I don't know. I don't know. There's so many things that come up in our lives that fight for our time. It just, sometimes you got to work over. Sometimes you're doing other things. Sometimes you're taking care of something else. There's nothing we can really do about that. It, it, It is a priority thing. And there are things in your life that are more prioritized than your hot rod. There's nothing we can do about that. But if you've got a little space, it can set for a little bit. And that happens a lot. You see a lot of projects die in the garage. A lot of them. Like I said, I'm the third owner. You had a third owner in project. I don't know how many owners had this car on the highway. 
I mean, who knows? It's been around forever. Uh, it's, uh, but the thing about my car, and I, I like to talk about this really quick, is uh, to change change channels really quick here. Is it was it was pretty much obsolete when it rolled off the assembly line. In 1939, when that car was released, somewhere Dodge just missed it. They missed everything. I don't know if they just had a narrow view of what the public wanted. But Ford came out with uh, the car of the future today. You could have that car today. And with the Mercury's and, and everything that came with it, with the big the V8s and, uh, you know, and then just a few years later, you know, the polys came out. And so where I'm going with this is if you look at my favorite car, uh, the 1957 Plymouth Fury is one of the big, I like all the big wing Chryslers. I really do. You look at that car and you look at the way that car was built, unibody, uh, you know, the big, you get the big Hemi put in it. Uh, it had a hydromatic transmission. That's 1957. So we got we got 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57. We got eight years. In eight years, that 49 was obsolete. You might as well be riding around in a buckboard as to be caught dead riding around in a 49 Dodge in 1958. I mean, you'd be like the Clampets. It, you would not be very popular. And uh, so these cars had a short life. Uh, some people got them and drove them forever, but it's it's really not a car that is sought after. And like I say, a uh, perfect car, $13,000, perfect, thirteen to eighteen, depending on who wants it. And I have that in it now, and it won't even start. But that's that's life. And so I really do I really do want a 36 Plymouth. And I, and I think that when I do get to the place in my life where I think I can get a 36 Plymouth, I think I'm going to take out a classic car loan and just buy it. I'm going to look at it, of course, don't buy a car without looking at it, having somebody go over it. Um because they're selling so much crap, and then another thing I, I always want to say about uh, I like to I like to clarify right now: if you're thinking about buying a classic car, uh, remember a lot of these convertibles on the road weren't convertibles. It, you know, they weren't convertibles like '36 uh, Fords. More '36 Fords on the road now than a Ford ever made. It's it's the way it is. So, um, but don't let that be a deterrent of, of what you want. Everybody likes the Viggies, everybody likes the Fords, and right now everything that's hot is the muscle cars. Yes, of course I do. Of course I love muscle cars. I love them. I can remember 1986, 86, 87, 86. 1986, I was a young lass. I was a young lass. And I remember everywhere I went back then, you are either on a bicycle or you are walking. And I remember walking by this driveway, and this guy in 1986 had a Plymouth Roadrunner with the big fin on the back of it. And I walked by it, and it was a big, big old car, big giant car. And I looked at it, and he had this bass boat metallic blue paint on it. Bass boat. And I looked at it, and I was like, oh, geez, that's such a nice car. And I went home, and I told my dad, I says, hey, this guy's got a car up there. You see that car? And he's like, yeah, I saw it. I'm like, man, that's a nice car. It's just all looking all good. My dad said, he wants too much money for it. He wanted like six grand for the car. <laughs> and that was perfect. It was a beautiful car. He wanted like six grand for the thing. And uh, 
that's that old hindsight. You're like, man, you know what that car would be worth today or what it is worth? Because I'm sure it's still like that. But I'm not in that category. And a lot of people are. And there's nothing wrong with that if you have it. But, you know, I can't see that happening. But I could see a 36 happening in the next couple years. If I'm still around, I'm still kicking rocks down the road. I could see that happening. And uh, we could, you know, I could see that happening at current value. And so that always changes. Now, the 57 Chevy is still holding 57 Chevy values. They've always been expensive. Uh, they got popular in the late 70s, and they, they've held their value. You've got the two-door post. You've got two-door convertible, uh, two convertible and the two-door uh, hardtop. And the hardtops are what everybody likes. And the posts are still cool, uh, but they don't hold the value that, that a hardtop does. And the hardtop is the one without the post in the windows. So uh, the, the big thing, I think, the big takeaway on this when we're talking about cars is if you decide to get into the car hobby, go to some car shows, go to some swap meets, you know, just look at it, hang out with it. And uh, remember, though, uh, that you have to really be committed to it uh, to get anything out of it. And it's not about the money and it's not about any of that other stuff. Um, the guys with the money do have some really cool cars, and it's nice. But the great thing about a car is once you get a project going is you can enjoy it in project. You can enjoy a car in project. You can uh, you prime there that joker and drive it. You can wrap the seats up with blankets and drive it. You can enjoy it as you work on it uh, once you get it to that point. There's nothing wrong with that. That's good. But you remember you got to have that, that expense of uh, moving the car and all that other good stuff. And so, I mean, it, not to be a naysayer or, or to poo-poo anybody's ideas of wanting to get in a car hobby. It's great. It's great. And you can do it. But you you have to have a few things available to you. The biggest thing I can tell you is space. That's the most important thing. Your money isn't important. Time is important. Time and space, those are the things you need. Because you can eat macaroni while you're getting parts. You can do that. You can tell I've done that quite a bit. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> huh, the buttons. Oh, do you want to hear the DJ? Like I say, all the 80s DJs. You are listening to the Cocaine Cowboy. We're going to be riding all night until somebody dies. Kiss 49.9. Third caller gets a set of tickets to the Pickle Eating Contest. We'll be back after these messages. Yeah, all the DJs back in the day, that's uh, that's what you got. Would you like to hear my listening audience? My goodness. Man, I tell you, I love cars. I love talking about cars, and I know I'm beating a dead horse with that. But you know what? It makes me happy. I enjoy it. Uh, I can't wait to get more done and get that old girl up and running down there. But the Bronco's doing good. The Challenger is amazing machine. I can't drive it with the snowstorm coming in because she doesn't do good on slick roads because it's just a torque monster. I think that car was just made for burnouts. That's what it does best. You know, I get out in it and it just, there's just something about it that makes you want to do a burnout. That's the wrong button. I actually wanted to go. <sighs> but burnouts are fun. Don't let people tell you they're not. 
and yes, they're they're not uh, responsible or anything like that, but they sure are fun. And the smell of burnt rubber is just a beautiful aroma, and it's just fun. And I, I don't do it a lot, you know. I don't because I'm old and I'm, I'm afraid. You know the thing about this car, though. <laughs> the thing about the car, it's such an awesome, fast car. But I'm 51 years old. I turned 51 last week. And I still drive like an old man. You know, the car was made for somebody in their 20s. <laughs> it's not an old cat like me. <laughs> I'm sitting there 500 horses under the hood. And it's just amazing. You know, I'm just being all stupid. And then I, I'm going to show off or something, you know. And so I get on it. Wham! Wham! Man. <coughs> so I, I still drive like an old man. So that's the reason old dudes get automatics is so we still look young because if you hear a shift a car, it's like, damn, Grandpa, come on. You don't have to double clutch. Come on, speed clutch. Yeah, that's not in my vocabulary, kid. <laughs> and that's the way it goes. And uh, that's what's funny about it. And, uh, but I mean, other than that, it's a nice car <clears throat> and it, it's made for the highway. It's a good driver and I enjoy it. And that's doing good. The Chevy's still sitting by the house. I, I really need to take that Chevy out and sell it. I should sell it. I don't drive it. It's just sitting there growing moss and I could take that money and, uh, I could take that money and spend it on a 39. Actually, I could take that money and put it into the 39, or I could buy that 36 or put down on the 36. I don't know. I uh, I probably should wait. <laughs> but anyway, this live chat, chat's actually going pretty good. This old helmet, I'm glad you come by. And uh, any other guys that are... Checking it out later. I'll try to do more of these. Um, I know I don't have a big viewing audience. My listeners, though, that listen to me all around the world on my podcast, I appreciate you guys listening. And I know I'm not talking about mental health today. You know, I could talk about mental health some other time, but today I wanted to talk about cars. And I appreciate you guys coming by every week and listening to me. And it, it makes me feel like I'm doing something good. And, uh, you know, the podcast is the voice of the Orchard Counseling LLC, which is my counseling agency. And it's still not running. It's still in the growth stages. I'm still waiting on things. But we're going to get that together, and it's going to do good. And uh, we're just puddling along here, just tooling along, singing our song. And... uh I appreciate you guys listening. And uh, uh, my German audience, my Japanese audience, and uh, everybody else, I really do. A.J. Eikeson says, who are you? My name is Ray Carrington. I am a therapist in Colorado Springs. I am a hot rod enthusiast, currently working on a 39 Dodge Cornet convertible, and I usually put up videos, but uh, my buddy Rex that owns the shop where I keep my car, had a stroke, and he's getting out of the hospital tomorrow, so I've been several weeks without posting a video on the car, but that's who I am. I have a podcast called Carrington's Hot Rods and Mental Health, where we primarily talk about um, mental health, and uh, sometimes we talk about cars, but that's who I am. I'm really a nobody. Just a guy. Uh, I own the Orchard Counseling LLC here in Colorado Springs. And uh, we're currently getting ready to open. We're waiting on a few licensure things from the state. And that's what I do. And that's where I'm at. <laughs> and uh, I was just talking about the old 39 and the requirements of fixing up an old car. Man, this cold girl has been 
it's, it's one of those things that when you start working on a car, the next thing leads to the next thing. There's a lot of unknowns. Um, and so that's, hold on, I just got to, what did you say? Why, thank you. It is uh, Mr. AJ. Uh, so you just work on those cars and you just keep going and that's what I do. I am from, where am I from? I am from originally from a, a little town called Lone Oak, Arkansas. And uh, I've been living out here in Colorado for 21 years. But originally, I'm from the Mississippi Delta. That's what I call it. I call it the west side of the Mississippi Delta. It's between Memphis and Little Rock, Arkansas, on I-40. It's the easiest way to explain it. I'm not from the hills of Arkansas. I'm from the flat part, the floodplain. So that's where I'm from originally. And that's probably where I'll go when I get ready to curl up and die. I'll probably wander off back to the riverbank. But so anyway, the the cars have a big part in my life. <clears throat> USA. So the cars have a big part in my life. So when we talk about the cars, we're talking about um a lot of guys that do do cars. We talk about the growing up. We grew up. My dad was a was a car guy. My dad was one of those guys that had a different car every month or two. He was always one of those guys trading cars all the time uh, for a different car. And I'm not like that. I'm not like my dad was. I I am a guy that get a car and I will keep it until it breaks in half. And then I'll sell it to the crusher. <laughs> I, I am not a guy that cars have a one-way street with me. And that's the reason I said I need to sell the Chevy, and I never do because, yeah, yeah it's, you know, I have this thing in that Chevy. It's an old, uh, they call them pop-out trucks, right? It's a two-wheel drive Chevy, and it's got the Vortex, um, the little Vortex in it. It's not the 350. What's the one under it? I, my head's blocked, but anyway, it's the small. And it, and it's it's peppy little truck. But you know what? I think about that truck, and I'm like, you know what? That thing would look really good with the big Vortec in it, maybe turbocharged and big slicks. You channel that, that rear frame. You know, it's already pretty low, but you channel that frame, and you put those really big racing slicks on it. And uh, so we... Well, thank you, AJ. Thank you. Uh, I will. I'll try. I don't know if I can keep <laughs> making good. I don't know if any of my content's good, AJ, because it's, uh, you know, I these cameras under cars, and it's just me, and they're just not really, I don't have a high production value on that, but thank you for that. And so uh, the car, the, and I think about it, you channel channel that rear frame. You know, put put that narrow frame, put the tank on the side so you can well it out, <clears throat> you know, tub it, put the big tubs in it, tub it out, and then put those really wide, like the widest Michelins on earth under it so, so they're almost touching at the pumpkin. Uh, put those, uh, those uh, like a rear in it with the, the, in, the inset brakes so the brakes are right by the pumpkin instead of out at the wheels. And, you know, just I just see that truck. Uh, done, you know, like it should be done, like, and so every time I think about it, I'm like, I better hang on to it. It, I'm not sure I'm done with that truck. I'm not sure that I want, I want that truck to go away. I, I I may have a future with that truck because the truck has significance to me. It does. I mean, it's it's been around a long time, and it it came from an important person in my life. So I'm not a hundred percent ready because I keep saying I need to sell that truck. <sighs> the thing I don't like about it is the dash. The needles on the dash look like they're sword fighting, and from what I understand, I have to take the dash out, send it to Detroit for them to fix it. <clears throat> 
And other people say, no, you don't have to do that. We can fix it. But because it's got to do with the uh, odometer, that digital odometer. And so that's the thing I don't like about it is that's what's going on with it is, is it's just, it's got a little electrical bugs. And then the, and it, it, they need to be searched out and fixed and repaired before you do anything else moving forward with the truck. But in my head, I keep hanging on to it, thinking that, hey, that's going to be something down the road. But I haven't gotten there yet with it. Anyway, I think I've talked your head off today. So I'm going to close out the show. Thank you for watching, if you've been watching. And we'll see you next time we do something, okay, on Carrington's Hot Rods and Mental Health. Okay, I just stopped the recording. And uh, that's not my usual way of doing things, but it'll work. So you guys watching, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see what happens in the future. Hopefully I'll get some guests in here one day. As you can see, I've got microphones everywhere. And uh, we'll see what happens next. See you later.